Philip Keller grew up in Western Africa and raised sheep. Became a pastor, and he was a pastor in this country for many years. And in the 1970s, he wrote a book <coughs> called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And he gives a lot of insights and ideas about this passage that we don't normally encounter uh, in our thinking today. A shepherd looks at Psalm 23. This is probably the most, absolutely the most favored and well-known, often quoted passage in the whole Bible. Sadly, the only time you hear it is at a funeral. It's not meant for a funeral, really, though it's appropriate. I mean, it says some good things. But this song is not about dying. It's not about death. It's about living. And it's about a relationship that you have with your Savior, Jesus Christ. Reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Can't tell the difference, can I'm going to read it again. It's so well, it's so well known to us. And that is good, and yet it's not good. <clears throat> because you get so familiar with it, you don't really think about it anymore. But it's a beautiful passage. Now there's two words for Lord, L-O-R-D, in your Bible. If you have a King James Bible, it probably will show this to you. It has L-O-R-D in uppercase. And in other places has L-O-R-D with only the L in uppercase. Why? Because there's two words for Lord in the Bible. One of them is just ordinary Lord. Ordinary Lord. The house of Lords in England. The other with uppercase letters is Yahweh. And it's the name that God gave to Moses at the burning bush. I am that I am, or I am the eternal. I am the forever. Yahweh. It's Yahweh who is my shepherd. And it's in the present tense. It's not the Lord will be my Lord, or the Lord was my Lord, it's the Lord is my Lord, here and now. A wonderful truth for us to hang on to. He is my shepherd, and the key word there is my. My, first person, singular, my shepherd. He procured me. He protects me, and he provides for me. He procured me, he bought me, I'm owned by him. I belong to him by his shedding of his blood. He, through his Holy Spirit that he's put within you and put within me, protects us and keeps us and secures us, and we can count on that. And he provides for all our needs, not all of our wants, all of our needs. The Lord Yahweh is my shepherd. I have no want. That is, I have no lack. I'm not without any of the necessities of life. The Lord is my shepherd. A little girl one time was, she said, I don't understand that, but she said, I could say it a different way. A little tiny girl, she stood up in church, she said, all right, I'll quote it. The Lord is my shepherd. It's all I want. That's beautiful. That's the way it ought to be. The only thing we desire, the only thing we hope for, the only thing that we want is 
the Lord himself. His care meets all of our needs that we have. Satan's powerful. Satan's mean. Satan is a roaring lion, the Bible says. Satan will hurt us, but he's not stronger than Jesus. And anything you encounter in temptation, anything you encounter in difficulty, you can take the name of the Lord Jesus himself, and it is more powerful, stronger than anything else. Yahweh is my shepherd. I have no want. And he makes me lay down in green pastures. I always like this name, Evergreen. I do. I like it. I've always liked that name. Evergreen. Lush, green, growing. You can, it's almost like juicy grass. It is that which is so fresh and alive it is here. And in these green pastures, we have no fear of anything. You've got to have four things for sheep to be at ease and be made to lie down in green pastures. No fear. Sheep are very timid. They're very scary. But if you reduce this fear and take away the fear, they will settle down. No tension. You you as a sheep have no tension with the other sheep in the herd. Now, in real life, and you know I'm not a shepherd, but I read the book. <coughs> sheep butt one another. You've got the chief sheep and the little sheep, the king sheep and the queen sheep. They're in charge. And they push around you like animals do. But you take that tension away. It's like the tension that we have in church. We don't have tension with each other. We get along with each other. No fear, no tension. And one of the things that bothers you more than anything else, bugs, bugs, fleas, ticks, things that get in them all of the time. When I lived in Pineville, there was a little boy that was a 4-H project in a little land behind my land. And he kept that sheep right, right on the line where my line was. We were devastated with ticks, devastated with fleas. <clears throat> I couldn't do a thing about it. Sheep are tormented by little pests. You take away their fear. You take away their tension with other sheep. And you take away their pests. So the shepherd would anoint them with their oils, with their medicines, and get rid of the pests. The last fear thing you have to take away from the lack of food. A hungry sheep is not going to lie down in green pastures. But if they have no fear, if they have no tension with the other sheep, if they have no pests, and if they're not hungry, they're well fed. They will just lie down in green pastures. But being timid, they're scared of water. They have rest by still water, gentle water, bubbling, turbulent water. They won't drink it. They'll drink the dew in the morning off of the grass, but they will not drink bubbling, turbulent water, it frightens them. And they'll be right there at the water. And they'll die of thirst because they're scared. They're scared. Or it's polluted water. Clean, still water. He restored my soul. Sheep have little short legs. They can get very fat. And they can get in the mud. And sometimes they get down in that mud and they fall down and they begin to roll over. And if they roll over, they can't get up. They will die because they can't straighten up and be like sheep ought to be. And so this shepherd, when he 
he saw them, he'd take his crook and he'd pull them up so that they could stand up and be happy sheep. They call those cast, C-A-S-T, cast sheep, if they can't get up. But he's always ready to rescue the sheep. He's always ready to save the sheep. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, is always ready to rescue you from everything, no matter what it is. What's troubling you? If you are a cast sheep, a cast Christian, a cast church member, and you're in the mud, he will retrieve you and bring you back up. And why does he do this? The Lord is my shepherd. I have no wants. He makes me go lie down in the green pastures, green, luscious green, to rest by the still waters. He restores my soul by picking me up on my feet again. Why does he do it all? For his name's sake. Christ is more concerned about his name, his reputation in the world, his reputation among humanity. And that's why he takes care of us. That's why he loves us. That's why he rescues us. That's why he guides us and leads us because of his reputation. You and I are responsible for the reputation of Jesus, the good shepherd this community and elsewhere. The Lord it is my shepherd. I should not want. He leads me to the green pastures and the still waters. He leads me in paths of right living, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We thank him for being Heavenly Father, we just pray at this time as we come before you, thanking you for being the good shepherd, the kind shepherd, the loving shepherd, the one who gave his life to buy us, to purchase us, to bring us into his kingdom. We thank you for that. Now help us, Heavenly Father, to live in such a way, to act in such a way, that we will protect the name of Jesus the Christ. Now, Evermore. Amen. Number 91, surely goodness and mercy <coughs> follow me all the days of my life. Number 91. Show us there again.